Dun, 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 dun. Welcome to another Lava Lamp Lounge. Cody's brainchild. Cody's again sad, pathetic, infinitesimal, microscopic piece of the internet. What a f***ing loser! We're discussing the game Nemesis. I'm actually kind of surprised you picked this one. I'll get into the little pitch, the elevator pitch of this game. Um, so, if you've seen the movie Aliens, or Alien, you pretty much know Nemesis. Nemesis is a very high production, high quality component game created by Awaken Realms. Awaken Realms is known for doing kind of high production, heavy themed games. Nemesis is no different. You basically play as a crew who just woke up out of cryostasis on a spaceship. They don't know how they got there or they don't remember anything about themselves, so they're exploring the ship. Needless to say, the ship is infested with some sort of alien menace who may or may not have a, some resemblance to H.R. Uh, Geiger's Aliens from Aliens fame. Interesting premise. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to add? That pretty much sums up the game, right? So you're, you're dealing with the alien threat. Each uh, player will have their own respective objectives. And these objectives may or may not be for the good of the rest of the party or other members in the party. So you can qualify the game, I guess, as quasi-cooperative, depending on um, your party and how they want to play it and what objectives they choose. I guess what's kind of interesting about the game is each player will get two objectives. One, they, one uh, personal objective and one corporate objective. Needless to say, the corporate objective is a little meaner, uh, generally than the personal objective, and when a certain event happens in the game, meaning when the first alien comes out on the board, the player chooses one of the two objectives. Um, if they accomplish their objective and manage to survive, uh, they win. And you can have multiple winners as long as like multiple people uh, satisfy their objectives. And some of them might be player two has to die, or um, so that kind of is where the quasi-cooperative element comes into play. You can play this game fully cooperative if everyone... Uh, there is a fully cooperative mode. We never play with that, but there's a fully cooperative mode. But then also, depending on how mean you want to be, you can choose whether or not to play a helpful objective or an easy objective, difficult objective, whatever, when that alien pops out. So 21st best game uh, on Board Game Geek. That's how the schmoes rate it, though. The pros rate it differently. When you say pros, do you mean us? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about artwork. Uh, First category. Are you going to put it there? Uh, I'm going to put it down here. Okay. I don't know. All right. Artwork. What do you think of the artwork of the game? Um, great. It's like... How would you describe the style of the artwork? Realistic. Um, theatrical? <laughs> theatrical? Because like the characters are very... It's like drawn, it's animated, but kind it's of. very kind of... Um, in a realistic manner. It's very realistic, almost like a cool like, graphic novel. Okay. Like, the characters are really, really distinct and cool looking. They took a lot of time on the art. Art's the miniatures, really cool. Yeah, the art's really cool. The miniatures are really cool. All just the practical, like, icons and everything is, like, really well thought out. It's, it's meant to want... It's meant to put you in a scenario and kind of put you in, the, like, a theme... And so it all kind of plays well into that. Artwork's very pretty. Um, I will say that uh, if you had this game, I mean, it's one of those games that most gamers know about. It's a pretty popular game. If you had this game uh, on the board and you were playing at like with uh, playing at a bar and normies were to walk by, they would probably be instantly captivated and say, what the heck are you playing there, right? And they'll probably think that you're literally playing a board game version of Aliens. Yeah. <laughs> because that's essentially what this is. So artwork's awesome. Uh, production value, you kind of touched on that when you were talking about the artwork, and Awaken Realms is no slouch when it comes to production values on games. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. I'm a very shallow person, so all the way the game looks kind of uh, goes a long way for me. Um, a lot of times you can he have... He likes the look of one particular character. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're probably more forgiving, <clears throat> I think, I'm assuming, you're probably more forgiving of artwork and production value than me. I'm pretty like, it needs to look pretty. Um, I mean, I think everyone wants a game to look good for, to a degree, right? But I'm probably more picky about that than you are, I'm just assuming. Um, okay, let's just move on to uh, complexity of the game, mm -hmm. slash Erica variant. 
You can think Erica could play this game. Could normies play this game? Or non-gamers. Normies kind of sounds derogatory or a pejorative. Let's just say non-gamers, Erica variant. Could she play this? I feel like we would just be telling her what to do the whole time. Like, could she play it on her own? On and her and own? And make, I mean, make decisions on her turn on her own. Without, like, a, an alpha gamer or someone else at the table who's familiar with the game telling her what to do. Like, do you think she can play this game? I or non-gamers can play this game? I think this game is complex enough the first two or three times that someone who's not a huge gamer, they're into, like, party games, would be off-put by it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crunchy. I think maybe because I <coughs> played the game so much that it's not as complicated for me because I played this game a lot. But, yeah, I guess objectively it's a little complicated. Um, replayability. Oh, for sure. It's a lot of replayability because the panels, the ship dynamic changes. That's cool, yeah. Your uh, your character... The layout of the ship is always different. Yeah. Your character uh, objectives change. Yep. And so every time you play, the, chip, the ship is going to look differently. Your, different rooms. Your, yeah. yeah. The different cards are going to pop up. Different aliens are going to pop different up. Different events. So definitely a lot of replay, replayability. I agree. Um, theme for me, I know we're not really necessarily putting uh, numbers on these uh, discussion topics, but I would say theme for me in this game, I have no problem saying for theme for me for this game is a 10 out of 10 if I'm putting numbers on like Just talking about other games. Yeah, yeah but yeah, for this game for sure. There's like um, it, there's definitely fun decisions to be made. I think the game is can be a little complicated, especially if it's your first time playing it. But it makes all the stuff makes sense though, right? Mm -hmm. Like thematically, like um, it makes sense. Like if you keep in mind, like and there's different rooms and deep diff and different rooms do different things, and it may take you a minute to understand what all the different rooms do, but all the rooms make sense with what they do. Like there's a generator room, activate the self destruct. You're like, well, what the hell does that mean? And you really <laughs> only have to know the title of the room to know what it does. Right. That's how. The complexity kind of comes back to simplicity in mm -hmm. the design. Yeah. Because, like, you know what uh, you know, the, the med bay does. Right. You know what... Surgery. Yeah. The, the fire... Emergency room. Emer yeah. Fire the, control. Fire control room. The navigation room. You, control room. You know all those things. Yeah. So, um... And but it is kind of nice because, like, you might not give a shit. <laughs> Your objective might be very clear and Destroy you're looking ship. for one room. <laughs> yeah. And you don't really care about... Or you might be a character who... You're put in a situation. You don't care about your objective at all. You just care about surviving. Yeah. So it's it's fun to... Th that's where the theme comes in. Where, like, your gameplay can completely change because mm -hmm. the theme is survival. It's co-op. It's, okay. you know, working with each other. It's a lot of different things. I think the re... Uh, <clears throat> uh, what I really like about this game... I have a lot to say about theme because I think that's the best... Probably the best thing about this game. Um, it really immerses yourself. It hits you over the face with it. Like... I think the design of the game lends itself, and the theme itself, just lends itself to being just a, a wonderful kind of thematic experience because there's so many things that can happen in this game. Yeah. Like, the ship could blow up. The engines can get destroyed. You get you, eaten by an alien. The, the, uh, you get on an escape pod, but you died because you had an alien. You were infected in the escape pod. You or on your way out. Space. Uh, the sh you thought you were fine. You went back into cryostasis, but the ship went to deep space, so you died. An alien pops out of you on <laughs> right. the way to Earth. Right. Or, um, so even if you do manage to like accomplish your objective, you have to survive. Um, sociability, player interaction, what do you think with this game? A lot, because... You are you spend most of the time because it's a survival game working as a team, but to Until what extent, not, right? to Until how far, yeah. to how well you're working with each other rather than just manipulating each other. I like the engine mechanic where you have to trust each other. Are the engines working? The navigation. Are you trusting the person who says, "Oh, it's actually I just going checked. to Earth. It's going yeah. to Earth. It's fine." Yeah. Um, so all those aspects make it very social. It's fun. Because it is kind of fun to screw your friends over, but at the same time, you know, it generally behooves you to work with people. Yes. At a, to a certain extent. A lot of the goals are work with each other to a certain point. But let's talk about uh, skill versus luck. Um, so we, obviously there's some dice rolling <laughs> when you're rolling for noise, mm -hmm. when you're attacking aliens. Um, so there's, there's, the, there's the luck there. Um, so how would you, I, I don't know, how would you describe this, like, 
kind of this obviously there's cards as far as cards. the events so the cards you draw that you can draw from um so the, i say there's the a fair amount of luck really the setup yeah. of the ship yeah you might have an objective and you have it's to go the other to, end of the ship yeah you have to go yeah. to a, um a certain room mm -hmm. as part of your objective and it is the very last room that anyone explores it's i feel like it's a it's a really good mix of even if you have a room super far away that you need to get to, mm -hmm. even if you're drawing a bunch of aliens, yeah, you might lose, but it's still gonna be fun. Yeah. Like there was we've had games where you we are constantly just fighting aliens and we never get anywhere and it's purely survival. Yeah. And that's still fun. Final score. Yes. Oh, you're doing a thing there too. I, I just realized we were going through each of the things and you didn't do a well, thing. Well we we can like, we production just, value. I can we can do that. <laughs> production value. Oh, okay. You, you're gonna... Final reading, I want to start with you. Eight out of five. No! Oh! Wait, eight out of five. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> eight, eight point five. Oh. Or eight and a half. Okay. Um, but anyway, I give this... Uh, hold on. I want to build it up just a little bit, just because as long as I've known you, you've always said Nemesis is like your favorite game. I didn't say favorite. It's one of my favorites. I've always heard you. It's either... I it's, have a it's favorite. One, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. one of the... Okay, so I just want to... I'm going to gauge other games based on, other game ratings based on this, so, okay, go. You are? Which is because if this is like, I didn't you know, say it's my favorite, though. It's on it's the list. It's always I, on the it's list. It's on the top. list, yeah. It's, it's on the list, for okay. sure. We have a list. You mm -hmm. have a list, I have a list. This is on the list. Uh, 8.5, easy. This is a solid 8.5 for me. <laughs> Nemesis by it. Yes, good game. Solid recommendation. Awakening Realms is always awesome. Transition to Hula Girls or something. That's exactly what I do. That's the transition. A cool heat wave, a tropical heat wave, the way that she moved that, the moment that proves that she certainly can, can, can. Get it all out. My neck's been like hurting like right here. Yeah, I know. For some, yeah, weird. like this weird like clavicle thing. Uh, in preparation for whatever random fucking movie that you want to fucking talk about, I, uh, I made a martini. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. So, talk about Nemesis, the movie that complements it, obviously. Obviously, huh? Obviously, obviously. Is Pandorum. Oh, God. Okay. I, I don't know. I just felt there was to do that. There's nothing left for me. You're all that's left of us. Good luck. God bless. And Godspeed. So, Pandorum is a story about a ship that he having to explore the ship, a uh, foggy, and they begin to see what happened to the ship, and it becomes very... Uh, I think that was a big spoiler you just gave. That's like a big thing. You think the ship is in space. All you right, want to so, redo your synopsis? Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah. All right, take two. Um, <clears throat> so, uh... <clears throat> less is more. Oh, God. I'll give my synopsis. Okay. All right, so Pandorum is a sci-fi horror film. Um, I think it's a German film. I think it's a British German film, if I'm not mistaken, directed by a Christian Albert. Um, and the name uh, Pandorum comes from a fictional term that uh, they came up, that the filmmakers came up with. Uh, it's kind of a gimmick in the story that uh, basically a side effect of some sort of psychosis. Space madness! while traveling throughout space. Um, but basically, the film is about a couple individuals who are a flight crew of the ship. It's the year 2160-something. Basically, Earth is a piece of shit. There's about 23 million people on Earth, maybe, excuse me, billion people on Earth. All the resources on Earth are depleted. Earth is basically going to collapse. So... Uh, we have the wonderful starship Elysium, manned by, uh, at the very least, uh, Dennis Quaid and Ben Foster, to go out and find a new home uh, for humanity on the starship Elysium. And this could be basically a hundred year plus trip. 
Um, so think of it as kind of like a Noah's Ark. They're going out to a planet to colonize a new planet and basically find a new home for humanity. They go into cryosleep. They're, these two particular individuals, members of the flight crew, are jolted out of cryosleep by some sort of sinister evil. They don't have their memories. Uh, and as they're trying to kind of piece together what happened and where they are and what's going on with the ship, they encounter some hinky stuff. I would, that's how I would summarize it. Yeah. My initial feelings on the movie are I enjoy it. I've seen it a couple times. I think it's just a fun, simple sci-fi, uh, simple premise. When you first saw this film, were you with anybody? I don't think so. Like, did you see it in the theater, or did you? No, just watch it? I definitely. I don't even know if I went to the theater. Okay. I saw. No, I think it did, I could. I think I do remember seeing a trailer for it and seeing Dennis Quaid. But he's who's um, awesome, by the way. I, I love. I love Dennis, I love Dennis Quaid. Quaid. I've loved him for forever. Is he alive? Yeah, he was alive. Characters, fun little story, fun premise. It's a great just little watch. I like all the performances. I like all the actors. I like all the makeup, the sets, everything like that. Um, it's just. I think uh, if I had any criticisms, it would be that there's just a couple little <laughs> kind of little story things or like super tiny little nitpicky things. Little, yeah, picky things. Um, there is a twist. And it doesn't seem like super, super original. It's just original enough to where it's definitely its own thing, but it didn't blow my socks off with like the story or the twists or anything like that. But mm. totally solid movie. Like the action. It's spooky. Um... And I like Ben Foster. Okay. Anything else? Uh, we'll talk more about it. Yeah. Okay, I think the uh, the plot of the film uh, and the film on paper, it's cool. I actually think it's a cool concept. Like, I mean, ne like you said, nothing necessarily really unique. Um, you got, like a ship going out to find a new planet to basically save humanity, right? That is not necessarily a uh, and encounters some sort of space horror along the way. So that's not necessarily a unique idea, um, but it's still a cool idea, right? And you have kind of this gentleman, Ben Foster, because uh, for the most part, without giving any spoilers away, uh, for the most part, uh, uh, I keep saying Douglas Quaid. In his total Quaid. recall is yeah. Douglas Quaid is the character. Dennis Quaid is uh, staying kind of in the cockpit while uh, Ben Foster is kind of having this kind of odyssey uh, around the ship, right? Like, all of that is cool, and he's uh, he's encountering, like, random people um, and, and the random... And, yeah, and these the... random monsters or whatever the heck you want to call them, you, and, you, and you learn what uh, how these monsters came to be, uh, without giving any spoilers... So all of that is cool. So I do, uh, I do enjoy that aspect of it. I, what what issues did you have with it? Full full scope. Oh, full scope movie. issues. You want me to go? Yeah. Because at the very end, we'll rank it, but like okay. full scope on the. Um, all right. Now, and and this isn't necessarily limited to this film. Mm -hmm. This is limited. I was having a discussion with some other friends of ours about this uh, earlier today after watching it. Mm -hmm. um, why does to me? Why does so much sci-fi, movies that are kind of uh, in the genre, the sci-fi horror genre, why the hell do they have to feel like industrial rock videos? Why, <coughs> why, why do they have to feel like I'm watching a Nine Inch Nails video or... Marilyn Manson, the female, the, or like all, like all of the the monsters, like it's like the female. I could be actress, watching like Marilyn Monroe's Sweet Dreams video. That's the, yeah. that's what the hell this feels. The like. female actress, like, specifically her outfit, her hair, her look. The monsters, though, too. Well, I like the design of the creatures. I think my biggest issue was like all the other characters in it seemed a little. I think they fit with what you're talking about. I think the creatures themselves were designed really well. I think just the general look. So you of the actually, ship. so you actually, you actually agree with me, but you're saying, oh, yeah, but I you're agree. saying it's reverse. Because I was actually, fe I felt it more from the creatures than the characters. I felt from the characters. You felt it more from the characters than the creatures. And I felt, I feel it like from the set design was like again, like an industrial, ship. yeah, like an industrial no. rock, like metal video or whatever, like this music video. Excuse me. This movie is. If we had viewers, I'm sure I'd get plenty of comments shitting on me. But good for me. Like, luckily, we don't have viewers. This movie so, is a horror sci-fi, and yes. if you were to look at the ship as a ship, <laughs> yes. you'd be like, as "Oh, well, this it was, is a ship." What I'm just saying, if you were to, if you were a person in the real life ship, you'd be like, "This was designed by someone who's trying to make a horror sci-fi ship." 
It looks spooky, dark, weird. I would say it's the it's designed by some kid who's a Nine Inch Nails fan. It looked like kids got dad like some industrial rock goth kids mm -hmm. like got daddy's money and it's like let's make a movie. The set doesn't have to be scary. The setting, the story, how it's played out is scary. The creatures are scary. You don't have to make the set scary. Mm -hmm. When, where she's staying and she's looking, looking over those plants. Yes, because she's that supposed to be like, a, like she's supposed to be like a botanist. That or seems like a no place where you would or... actually have. That's... Actually, I thought that was the coolest set. Exactly. Piece. That, was that a... is what the ship would actually look like. Right. And then you get to the 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 next guy they meet, the kooky guy, and, and you look chef, at his set. The chef. Yeah, and you look at his set, and you'd be like, "Who is designing this ship?" Like who would design fans of Marilyn Manson? Oh, exactly. I'm just and no. I'm saying in the, nails. in the practicality of the movie. Yeah. Who's designing a ship that is going to put a room like this in there? <laughs> like this is a murder. Why room. does this room exist? Yeah. <laughs> is there, why is the designer of the ship putting a murder room in the ship? A murder ship? room. They're stronger than you know. If they come after you. Run. And how dangerous these bad guys are. Yeah. Is enough to sit there and go. We can spend the rest of the time running, hiding, and it, the tension is there, rather than fight scene, fight but that's scene, another, fight scene. But that's another way that I think could have, impro again, improved this film, mm -hmm. is like if they went more psychological, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but, I, but, um, but you know, your mileage may vary, right? You may enjoy this, but like, uh, what, like, again, we're making these comparisons to Alien all the time tonight, but like, the reason like something like Alien worked for me is you have that kind of psychological aspect. It's like, where's the threat? You don't know where the threat is. Like, so if you had that in Pandorum, where you got, you know, these these uh, characters, like, moving as a unit, and it's like, what's the threat? What's the monsters? What's going on? Keep the threat hidden, even. Like, what, what like... Or even... I like the design but, of them. Show me that... So, but they don't have to be flying around. They have to be jumping around. They don't have to be super strong. Right. Oh, it's that. their numbers. Yeah, yeah. And how creepy looking they could be. That's it. Because mm -hmm. it's three people versus a thousand of these things. Yeah. And that's scary enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time they make a sound and move around, it's not that they're going to, like, leap ten feet to grab you. It's just the fact that they're... They're, you can hear them running towards you, and they're just going to eat you. Yeah. That's scary enough. Also, the movie is so dark. Like, that's not, yeah. Not dark. Literally dark. Like, the yeah. movie is, like, the lighting and stuff. It's like, dude, come on. Like, I, I mean, I get, like, it's supposed to be scary and stuff, but it's so like... So this is, the ship uh, is I, meant like, to be uh, Noah's Ark. Right. And if you're and getting systems, people to sign up for it... The systems are not functioning. They're trying to figure out what's going on with but the ship. But if you so, ask me to yeah. go onto the ship as... You know, hey, we're coming onto the ship. You're the last humans to survive. We, we got to repopulate. And I walk onto we the re, ship. We got to repopulate I'm like, humanity. oh, no, this is like, this is like a haunted house. Why did you design the ship to look like well, to be fair, a though, haunted house? To be fair, though, once they get power at the very end on in the ship, you see what the ship looks like with power, right? So you do have lights. And the stuff. cockpit yeah, is nice, yeah, but everything so, else still, still looks spooky and weird. But, but um, yeah, like, um, so, how do you feel about the twists, though? I feel like there's a couple mm, twists. It's all right. I mean, I don't know. I. It just. I get. <laughs> I get the twist, mm -hmm. and it just wasn't impactful. Uh, the The twist wasn't impactful for me, mm -hmm. um, and that. And I don't know if that's because everything leading up to it. I wasn't impressed by, mm -hmm. so maybe that. So I already had this bias. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why the twist wasn't as impactful for me. Um, but there's is, um, a, uh, you know, spoilers, I don't know if it's a spoiler, but there is a significant twist in the film. There's like two twists. Um, yeah, so, um, I don't know, I, well, I don't know, how'd it land for you? Like, I mean, because you obviously, like, like the film more, so. I think oh. the, um, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, that's a good, that's a good twist. And then, um, or both the twists. I'm like, oh yeah, those are good twists. I just didn't care about the characters. <clears throat> I mean, I, 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 think, I, I didn't care about the characters either. That was, I guess, an issue of mine too. And this will probably like, edit it out. But like, sure. The not necessarily singling this film out, but it always bothers me when you watch movies and someone's just magically a badass mm -hmm. and you don't know like why. Like their background could, you know, oh, it's like I make mufflers, but yet I can kick everyone's ass, right? Yeah. So, so, um, that that bothered me initially with this film, but then when I thought about it a little more, it's like, well, okay, if they're spending X amount of time, 
avoiding monsters, then eventually you're going to become tough or whatever. Like, I, so the fight scenes, I guess, kind of, <laughs> I'm beating a dead horse, but the fight scenes kind of just felt unnecessary with the humans, with each other. I think they just wanted to get, like, because why are we fighting each other, right? And, and the execution and the way it looked, it was just all yawn for me. So, um, again, maybe under a different set of circumstances, different set of execution, different production value, whatever, uh, I might like the film, but that's it. That's why it fell flat for me. I think I can definitely agree with... Luckily, she doesn't do anything unre unrealistically badass. Right. Right. And I think, I, I definitely agree with you, like, it seems almost like Wizard of Oz, like, instead of every single time she comes across the lion, the witch, <laughs> or the lion, the scarecrow, and the tin man, she starts, like, fucking trying to, you know, beat their faces yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I saw a human in that situation, I'm hugging them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm freaking out. Yeah, yeah. Overall, I don't think about it too much, because I don't, I don't expect it to be, like, a highbrow movie. I'm just like you don't not, care. It's not you, interstellar. You, you, it's not practical. It's just a sci-fi adventure. You don't care. You just want to yeah. be entertained. It could have been. It could have been done better. I think it could have been scarier. It could have been you know plotted better or whatever. But for what it is, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Mm. What's your rating then? Are we gonna go to ratings? Why not? We can keep talking after. Ratings. Well, yeah. Um, hold on. Can I predict your rating? You. I'll predict your rating. You predict mine. Oh, hold on. Let me set it. Hold on. Okay. Let me. Set it. We, we doing point five, out of ten, and we're, and we're yep, doing point five, in, point five increments, yep. right? Okay. Should I write it down? You already have it set, so I can say it. Yeah. It won't like impede you no. or bias you. Or you have it. All right. I'm gonna say you think this film is an eight. Seven point five. Seven point five was gonna be my thought actually, yeah. but I upped it. Okay. Seven point five. All right. I, I swear I thought seven point five were a fact. Now you like more than that. Okay. I'm gonna guess yours now. All right. 6.5. Okay. What did you guess? Yeah. We're pretty far apart. Oh, no. Five. And I don't even know if I want to give it a five. Like, oh, it's a, it's a I would not watch this film again. Like, I have no... I liked it. I have no reason... Okay, now I'm going to shit on it now since the rating... All right. <coughs> Hold on. Okay. Can we agree that the female in it is attractive? <laughs> I feel like she was right up your alley. But we can edit this part out. Are we editing this out? We can edit this out. She's attractive. Yes. Oh, yeah. And she had the... It was Pandorum. I think that's... Pandorum! I think... Pandorum! That's where I... Kind Pandorum! Of, that's where I agree with you, like... So bringing it all together, Cody, sum it all up for us. Nemesis, 8.5. Pandorum, 7.5. Mary Winston, 10 out of 10. Mary Elizabeth Winston. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winston, 10 out of 10. All right, so for me, Nemesis, 8.5. Pandorum, 5, maybe less, depending. And Mary Elizabeth Winston, 10 out of 10. Don't forget to like it!